kick this thing off. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's see, call to order at 10.04. All right, so uh, I'll lead here with uh, my, my buddy Henry absent. Uh, my only report is I got uh, the lovely opportunity to stand up at Scott Neese's last uh, hurrah at the Hammer Theater a couple weeks ago and give the uh, parking report. Uh, and, you know, went through a lot of the good things that are going on here uh, and then made sure I threw Henry under the bus and said, anybody had any questions, uh, give Henry a call that he's the chair. And uh, <laughs> maybe that's the reason he's not here today. Uh, maybe he's still ticked off at me. I don't know. But um, hopefully it was all in good jest. So, uh, but it was uh, good to get that opportunity that Scott provides for his uh, two minute you know, uh, quick lightning round uh, that that he did at his last meeting. Arian, anything else that needs to uh, that Henry would have brought up? Not that I'm aware of. No, I think we can go. Um, I don't see any members of the public here. Peter's with uh, Councilmember Perales's office, uh, just sitting in. So. I think unless anybody raises their hand or anything, we can skip over the open forum and go to the consent item, which mm -hmm. includes two minutes from June and September due to the lack of quorum. And then the just the formalization of the annual work plan to approve that. So really just need a motion in a second and we can approve all three. So quick question. I wasn't at the September meeting. My apologies. PG&E turned off my electricity and we were scrambling to keep our food alive. Um, so should I abstain from that one since I was not there? That's that's fine. Your call. Uh, technically, you don't have to, but, um, you know, lots of people. Well, I would like to, I guess, because I wasn't. You're welcome to do that. So let's take these one by one then. Uh, so. Uh, all in favor of the uh, June fifteenth minutes? Aye. Any dissension? Okay. So we got one, two, three, four. Is it that? Is it four zero? Uh, I think it would be five. Five. Okay. Five zero. Okay. Um, now we'll go September seventh minutes. David's going to abstain. Anybody else have any comment or are you all good with that? So no, four oh one. That would be six for the June. And then I five if there's no disagreement on the September with David abstaining on that one. Yeah, motion to approve. Okay, motion from Wolfer Wolfram on the September. Can I get a second on the that second? One? I'm a cool. And then I'll need a motion and a second on the June. Motion, motion on. Same, same folks. Okay. Hey, Arian, maybe you want to uh, clarify though the count. So I have, a, have six. I have six O for June and five O for September. With one, two, with I see five only. That's yeah, I, so I'm I'm counting five of us. Oh, sorry, you're right. Yep, five yeah. and four. Five and four one. Five four oh one. Okay. We're I struggling think. with basic math this morning. This is gonna be a long meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I had a check marks instead of an X next to uh, Henry's name. All right, there we go. All right, annual work plan motion in a second. And then we'll have discussion. Okay. Motion to approve, David. I'll second. Motion. Hey, Wolfram, Wolfram second. You. Okay. Any discussion? This is the usual, uh, guys. Yeah, I'm happy to pop that up on the screen here, real quick, if anybody wants to see it. This is as it was shown at the last uh, meeting. I did see that I didn't update that document, so it still shows the second, but here we are on the ninth. But those standard recurring items across the year. 
All right. Okay. Uh, we got a first and a second. Uh, okay. Any other additional comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's your five. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's see. Back to the agenda. Item 5A. Pull that up here. I'm going to close off some of these other documents that I had open that we've already approved. Share screen. So I think as I've done, this has the narrative here if you have it open. Otherwise, I can share maybe the numbers and walk through the narrative component of it so you can see the numbers as I talk. Otherwise, feel free to nudge me at any point. Um, so revenues totaled 13.1 million, which included 10 million from the lots and garages and 2.9 uh, million for the parking meters. There was a little bit of miscellaneous revenue that comes from things like validations, key card deposits, and then interest on the account. Uh, total revenue exceeded our modified budget by 172,000. Um, kind of rewinding the clock a little bit, we had originally come into the year with a budget of 6 million from the garages and 1.7 million uh, for the meters, which was a very conservative look. Earlier in the prior year, during a mid-year budget period, we adjusted that. And so we have the modified budget where we increased our revenues uh, to the 9.8 and 2.8. And then as the year went on, we, we got very close, but we did exceed it slightly. Um, on the expense side of the board, total expenses were 9.8 million here, uh, about 80% of our modified budget, big savings in DOT personnel. So that's our team of about 450,000, um, mostly due to staff vacancies. We had several positions in the division that were vacant, um, some for, most of the year, if not all of the year. Um, and then we had some recent retirements that also affected that as well. Um, and so we have recruitments going on for uh, parking supervisor, which will oversee our security contract. We had a parking administrator position, which we filled in, in August. So in our current fiscal year, which was vacant for several months. Um, we've got an analyst position, which is vacant. We've got, what else, Heather? Remind me, any other positions that hit that? Would our engineer one, two touch it at all? No, I don't think so. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit from the senior engineer, just a sliver, but okay. not, not, a, not a significant amount. Okay. There's other vacancies that we have that don't touch the parking fund, um, but that was there. We had $2 million, um, 1.9 from our contractual services. The bulk of that was from our parking operator that we, we still see. Uh, they're trying to do their own hiring to fill some vacancies. And most of that is because the contract is built upon a staffing model where we had uh, parking ambassadors or cashiers at the facilities from 6 a.m. till 2 a.m. every night. And now we are and we have transitioned into a model where we're using the technology to centralize all of those functions in one facility. Um, and so we've got less staff. So we'll see significant savings likely across that line but we are trying to hire more of those call center representatives so that we can get ourselves to a point where we actually have uh, 24 seven coverage with uh, the intercoms. The transfers total 985,000 roughly, um, which is right on budget. Those typically come out right at the very beginning of the year. 
there's I don't know that I've ever seen an overage or an under uh, spent in any of those line items. Um, we did not transfer any funding to our capital program this year. Um, so that was zero. The net change to our fund was 2.3 million, um, which was greater than our projected loss or reduction in the fund balance. So we actually put some money into the balance versus taking from the reserve. Um, the ending fund balance then is at 7.2 million, uh, which includes some reserves for various contractual encumbrances and this emergency repair pot of money with an unrestricted amount of 5 million. Any questions on the high level piece there? If not, we can look at what we ended the year on the capital side here. So our, well, let's see if I can get this in the screen all the way here. There we go. Um, Elevator upgrades, we, we've got large projects for the 4th and fourth Street Garage, 4th and San Fernando, the Market Street and 3rd Street Garages. We're going to be upgrading, let's see, two, five, nine, 10 elevators across those three facilities. Um, some minor expenditures this year, mostly for consultant work to do the uh, scope of work and the bid packages for public works. Um, so most of the money will be then earmarked next year or in our current year that we find ourselves in now uh, to move that project along, which is the case for many of these big project lines, garage facade, uh, parking inventory, is that there were some little amount expenditures either for public works or consultant work, um, but the actual big money won't be spent or earmarked till either this year or next year um, as those projects proceed. So we'll continue to see little expenditures as we move along, but then not until we get a contract awarded and those big funding uh, necessary to get encumbered for those projects will hit. And so we've moved some of those monies forward to the, uh, the next year. So as you can see for the garage elevators, we moved $2 million, 2.2 million from 21-22 into 22-23 to fund the, the larger portion of the project. Same with the garage facade, we moved 1.6 million to the next year. Um, in terms of the garage facade, you can see the timeline here. Um, I just kind of circled back on that. We were actually slipping on that by anywhere from probably three to six months. Um, we were looking at a project closeout for the facade in late 23. It's probably going to be in Q1 24 at this point. Um, garage, greater downtown parking inventory. Uh, real estate just recently went to council to purchase a couple of properties on the site that we call Lot E. So uh, that was in 22 23 calendar year. Um, so we only had some minor expenditures here for some consultant work and public works, but we did spend money in 22, 23 or earmarked money for those at land acquisitions. Hmm. We spent only a little of our green tech, mostly tied to our EV charger subscriptions to maintain those, uh, accounts on the existing EV chargers that we have. So we liquidated the remaining 173. We didn't see the need to carry that over to the next year. We have a couple hundred thousand dollars in each of our out years. So rather than just carrying that forward, we, we just put that back into the fund balance. Uh, we are working with several EV companies, EV charger companies, as they have expressed interest in putting chargers in. Uh, mostly the Market Street Garage and bringing fast chargers. So we currently have level two chargers, the slower 
um, and they've expressed interest in putting in some fast chargers. So we're working on that and hopefully at no cost to the city. And they would put the infrastructure in, they would upgrade the electrical uh, necessary to do that, and then also pay for the space that they would occupy to put their chargers in. So, Arian, is that in all the garages or is that in? Those, those third parties for the fast chargers have really targeted the Market Street garage um, as the one that has kind of that proximity to restaurants and activity where somebody would park for an hour or two to do their business and then move along. Um, we've tried to leverage those conversations to see if we could get some put in some other locations. Uh, but as of yet, we don't have contracts yet. We're kind of still in that exploratory phase. Uh, these companies kind of want to come to us with a simple one or two page contract and say, here's what we do when we go to a Target parking lot, go ahead and sign this. And we have to tell them that's not necessarily how we do business. We're trying to figure out whether or not we can sole source some of this stuff or if we have to do a competitive process to bring uh, some of these things to fruition. Yeah, just be careful about the longevity of the deals. Oh, <laughs> I see Heather nodding her head. Those are the conversations that we have when we bring the kind of practicality of operations to some of these things. Um, yeah, they just tie your hands. That's all. Yep. Yeah. You don't get nothing for nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, minor facility. We undertook a couple of minor kind of facility improvement things along the way. Um, a lot of uh, warranty project, just warranty maintenance contract expenditures, miscellaneous projects, uh, build out and uh, upgrade of uh, the staff break room at the employee garage and then we had a large fund balance at the end of the year another situation where we just carried that down to our fund balance versus moving it up to an out year um, revenue control upgrades this one we are getting close we have done the preliminary acceptance of each of the eight or seven garages and now the final step is kind of the final system acceptance of the entirety of the system where the vendor has to perform a 30 day uh, test with no hiccups. So we're moving towards the start of that 30 day test, probably right after the holidays, we're thinking. And at that point, then we'll start cutting the large checks and close out that project. Uh, not much else of significance across that. We'll get into some of the out year capital when we move along to other items in the in the can, agenda. Before Here's you go the snapshot. On, can, I, Look, oh. Avery, sure. can I ask you a couple? Where is lot E? Lot E is over by the What's, Center what's the nearest intersection? The corner of Barack Obama, Barack Obama and St. John. Thank, Thank you. And um, what is security improvements? Uh, is cameras, mostly stuff related to our uh, CCTV system is what we envision spending money on. Uh, could be things where we would put in additional lighting, uh, mirrors in stairwells, you know, anything that we could say would enhance a security aspect of a facility would go in that line item. We have uh, we have the 1.15 million that we moved to next year is really earmarked for revamping the entirety of our surveillance camera system at our garages. But I think I've mentioned previously, there's a citywide project to do that. So police department, fire stations, airport, City Hall, like any city facility is being wrapped up into a citywide uh, RFP, and that's kind of dragging on longer than anticipated. So we've moved that money into the out year. So it may not even be spent next year. It may take many more years before they get this done. Prepare me for it. Will you? I mean, let's uh, we could be pragmatic and say, yeah, let's prepare for that. I, I, I'm not driving that bus, so unfortunately, we're just holding the money so that when they say we're ready and have a vendor available, then we're ready to go. 
who's taking the lead in that? What department in the city? Purchasing. Oh God, thank you, I'm You're done. So here's how the 10 million in off street revenue uh, shook out and Elias will have the on street revenue piece in the next item. Convention Center and Market Street, obviously the big drivers, Market Street, more than Convention Center, uh, as the Convention Center still just didn't have the event activity that it would normally have. We're seeing some bigger things come back. Uh, I think right now, actually, yes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Zoomtopia um, was at the Convention Center or is at the Convention Center, so a large convention, and we've seen a couple other things uh, in the last month or so, come back with some larger crowds and large uh, parking demand. So a positive sign. Hopefully we continue to see that. Um, so that's the revenue side. This is, I've, I've mentioned it before, a pretty rudimentary allocation of expenses across the facilities. So I don't necessarily love the, the bottom line shakeout of how this hits. I don't know that it's the most accurate representation, but it's, it's how we have broken it up. And I know we've added in the percentages uh, based on feedback from you guys. Um, I did want to note that we have historically had the Customer survey information was kind of the final component of this. It had dropped off prior, just during the pandemic. So we haven't done it for the last couple of years. We are energizing that process again. Um, we haven't gotten the greatest of results fielding surveys. Uh, we checked our online because we do use a, a survey monkey. We have QR codes available for people to input. Uh, we've tried marketing the, the survey on our website at our facilities, at the pay points, at the pay stations. Uh, we're going to try and do that again, but we're going to re-energize the physical handing out of survey cards and see if we can't get more responses again, uh, because I think we got fewer than 20 responses uh, over the last you know six months or so. But we will be putting that survey result stuff back as soon as we start garnering enough results. So, Aaron, why is the Fourth Street Garage so so far down? It just isn't getting the uh, the business activity that it used to get prior to uh, some of that overflow from some of the other facilities, where the Third Street Garage was was full, had a long wait list, so some of that would trickle over to the Fourth and San Fernando Garage. I think. Um, a lot of the construction work that was happening across the street from City Hall, the Miro project for several years had a large construction activity piece driving uh, a large number of monthly permits there. And we just haven't seen the, the student activity that we used to see. Yep. Um, and I don't know if that's emblematic of kind of the university as a whole as to how people are, you know, coming and going. I'm not, maybe you, you have a little more information on that or if your garage at South Campus is facilitating more people using their permits and then taking the bus in or? Yeah, and it's cheaper to park on South Campus than it is on the main campus. So some students are doing the economics on that and taking the bus up. Um, lots of students still think that our parking garages are too crowded. They just, right now we're 60, 70% back in person and uh people are still not taking vta in and so they're still driving in so you know 11th street in the mornings is brutal you know driving down that if anybody's taking that uh trek in and dot uh doesn't understand that you know they should not be working on 11th street in the morning or 10th street in the afternoon uh they could just flip-flop those and it, it would make for a better commute for everybody coming into downtown but uh that's fallen on deaf ears when i've ever i tried to talk to them about it so, but parking on the campus is less full than uh, I'll say three or four years ago. Mm, okay. I mean, so just that, from that, our office windows on the days, you know, when we're in the office, I still see the 10th street 
garage filled to the roof. 10th, 10th Street is the first one that fills. Okay. So then they're trickling. But yeah, we just have not seen that that student demand. And I think it's just all across downtown. The office demand just isn't there. Yeah. Um, I think oh, maybe it's worth showing now. Well, you know, I'll wait. We have some information to share relative to navigating and finding facilities that I think we'll, the board will like to see, but we'll get to that at a later item. So this is an approval item. Uh, if there aren't any follow-up questions, we could move to a, a motion and an approval. Motion to approve. Thank you, David. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor. I saw, I just got an email that Sarah had to drop uh, due to some work stuff. So we are left with one, two, three, four. four. Okay. Perfect. Item 5B on street, Elias. Would you like me to share my screen or how do you want to do that? Yes, please. No Can you problem. Share the screen? I've got it. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is our annual report uh, to update the board on single uh, space meter revenue. The memo is, uh, is intended to address three areas. One, revenue generated in the smart meter expansion area and its implication on the cost recovery of the smart meter expansion project. And the second is meter revenue update for fiscal year 21-22. And the third is the revenue outlook for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, so let's start first by bringing your attention to column one and two um, of the table, which show the revenue uh, generated in each meter area compared to the historical base that was used to um, calculate the expansion cost recovery balance. Um, the excess revenue, which is the third column, is then applied to the remaining balance of the expansion cost recovery, column four. Um, you know, as you all know, we expected for the cost recovery to happen much earlier, and then the pandemic hit, and that dragged now for a couple of years. Um, uh, please note that the Japantown cost recovery, expansion cost recovery was uh, achieved in 1920, and it was reflected in a previous memo, whereas Old Civic Japan, uh, and Center and SOFA and East Santa Clara uh, all had remaining balances. The fiscal year 21-22 saw an increase in the SOFA district and generated enough net revenue in excess of its remaining cost recovery balance. And the net revenue uh, generated will be applied towards the total expansion cost recovery, bringing it down by 48,000. Uh, I wanna point out that there is a, a minor error in the footnote. It refers to fiscal year 2021. We will correct that to say 21-22. Uh, now, moving on to the meter revenue update. Uh, Arian, if you can scroll down a little bit. So, uh, in 21 22, we saw an increase in revenue compared to fiscal year 2021, but we still fell shy of the pre pandemic revenue levels. Uh, please note two things one, that the exterior meter areas were still inactive during the first quarter of uh, 21 22. And then two, although the core downtown meters were active the whole year, they still fell short of pre-pandemic revenue levels by roughly 700K. Uh, and finally, the revenue outlook uh, for fiscal year 22-23. The first quarter continues to show signs of recovery, but still at 76% of the revenue levels when compared to first quarter of 1920, uh, which was a quarter that wasn't impacted by the pandemic yet. And uh, if we just take the exterior meters separate, separately and compare them to quarter one of uh, 1920, 
uh, they are estimated at 67% of the revenues. And that's it for me on the meter revenue. Are there any questions? Table one has lots of red. <laughs> Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, does anybody know what the number is? I mean, I've been working with these numbers like 35, 40% of the office workers are back downtown. Is that still more or less accurate? There's some outfit that does that in the downtown association, um, uh, passes that information along. Sound right? I mean, relative to the occupancy in our kind of core garages, that 40% number is about right for a lot of kind of the key right. days. Um, you know, we see some spikes here and there. Um, I will say that just on the, the off street side of things, the, the kind of peak evening bar nightclub, that activity is has been back and in many ways exceeded some of the pre-pandemic stuff, but um, just aggregate as a total, yeah, it's still still down. And we're the lowest number of any major metropolitan area in the United States of America. So I feel your pain in yeah, parking. I mean, right. Likewise to the, you know, the businesses downtown. <laughs> Elias, Heather, and I often go to lunch, you know, together uh, when we're in the office. And, you know, unfortunately, it's lots of businesses goes down. Bumping into doors that are no longer open. Um, some that never were opened again since the pandemic. Some that have closed just in the last, you know, couple of weeks that were there for the last couple of months that we became like, okay, now it's in the rotation. Uh, and they close so well there's a new thai restaurant that just opened two doors down from us if you'd like to frequent a new business in downtown as you know that's across from the chase bank more or less yep yep familiar with the block uh we'll have to check it out i think they opened in the last couple of days actually oh wow okay we'll put it on our put it on our queue So this is another. Do you have any new businesses have opened up in Japantown? I mean, this is off subject a little bit, but yeah, yeah, we've been able to recruit a couple. Uh, we got San Jose made back in Japantown at one of the primary locations um, or primary retail spaces, and we're just waiting for a couple other places to come online. Uh, they're waiting for building permits. So, um, and I'm in touch regularly with the broker for the new apartment complexes. So we're excited to see what happens there. <laughs> On a happy note. Thank you. So 5B is another approval item. So need a motion second and a, a vote. Motion to approve. Seconded. Maybe it's easiest to say any of the four uh, dissent. Or I <laughs> oppose yeah. none. Yeah. Okay. There you go. 5C, I will open up and share my screen here. So this one is a little more cumbersome than the last capital one. Can you, oh, am I sharing? Yes. Okay. So same uh, project line items. We have the proposed budget for our current fiscal year so that now we're last capital update was for last year, 21, 22. This is a look at 22, 23. Um, so we're looking at what we had originally proposed as our budget, what we carried over from the prior fiscal year, 21, 22, um, any kind of mid-year rebudgets or unspent funds from the prior year moved over any modifications that we made or really kind of what that 
these two line items then total up to, or three in this case, to create our modified budget. And then again, another move during our, what we call the annual report piece, which ends up being the modified kind of end all be all number for the year. And then this is a look at what we've spent. So garage elevator upgrade, you can see we've got the 5 million, $5.2 million. That's to cover the 10 elevator cabs across three facilities, the fourth in San Fernando with, this has the largest number. This has five elevators, um, mostly due to the capacity of the Rotary Summit Center required all those additional elevators, the Market Street Garage with its two elevators and the Third Street Garage with three elevator cabs. So we'll be upgrading all of those, modernizing them. It's a large project. Um, looking forward to that, we're gonna upgrade them with more robust uh, flooring. Currently, some of them have rubber kind of tile flooring. We've had fires set in the elevators um, that have damaged the, the flooring and walls pretty badly. So we're going with kind of a steel diamond plate approach to really create a cleanable, robust surface. But we admittedly, you know, as this is a, a longer process with a big scope of work, very technical uh, project that Public Works is leading, you know, there's only been some minor expenses expenditures with the public works staff to put that together before it goes out to bid. Um, but we expect that to go out to bid here in the next couple of months mm -hmm. and then wait until we get the complete timing, which I'll update the board on hopefully at the next meeting. The, the facade improvement 4.4 million. This is basically, I've mentioned it before many times, remove the existing tile facade clean up what remains of the, the surface to then bring in Brian Brush for the, the new facade, which we had shared with you, the concept of the illuminated bands and lighting along the exterior. Um, greater downtown area, multimodal, this is a small line item. Uh, there's some wayfinding for downtown that's still in there. I think that that's getting carried over to the next year. Here's the, the parking inventory, which is the Lot E site um, for property acquisition. So we've got 9.5 million. I believe 6 million went towards property acquisition. The, the remaining balance will then go towards the uh, what we call the Milligan lot, which is also at the corner of Barack Obama and St. John. Lot E is, I'd say, is on the northeast corner of that intersection, and the Milligan site is on the northwest corner of that intersection. Uh, the development of a surface lot on the Milligan site with just over 300 spaces is underway. Um, plans and specifications are being done now, reviewed with the SAP Center for their buy-in. Um, so we should get out to bidding that project, Public Works leading that again uh, here shortly. TBD on what the final plan is for the lot E site, whether it'll be a temporary surface lot or potentially built into a large multi-story structure. Um, we've said the parking fund is not in a position to build that garage. So that's got a larger uh, conversation to be had with uh, between city manager, real estate, and the arena on kind of what the next phase of that plan is. Green technologies, here's that 200,000 that we kind of keep each year with the anticipation of putting in some electrical uh, vehicle infrastructure um, is really what it's been used. In the past, we've used it for things like upgrading LED lighting across the portfolio. That's done now. Uh, we did a small LED lighting upgrade at the employee garage, but for the most part, um, we're, we're reserving those funds. If we get to a project point, we'll expend it on EV charger uh, updates or upgrades. Otherwise, we would 
liquidate that balance and then use the funding from the next year because we carry that out to each year. Minor parking facility improvements. This is where we undertake a vast number of projects. Um, this year we are undertaking the We'll be doing a repaving of our South Hall parking lot. That's the lot that surrounds the South Hall tent. It's in pretty bad shape. It's starting to crumble. Working with uh, Team San Jose, the convention operator, to uh, basically clean that up for a longer term uh, surface parking lot in that area. And then we are, we've got projects that we've identified. At Market Street, there's some ponding issues on the rooftop of the Market Street garage. It's deteriorating some of the uh, some of the concrete on the roof. So we're working with Public Works on uh, a scope of work to remedy those water ponding issues. Uh, <laughs> we just fortuitously timed a facility walk with Public Works last week when it was raining pretty well, and actually got to see that ponding uh, for the first time in almost a year or two with the lack of rain that we've seen. Um, but we'll undertake that project. And then we've got some other remedial projects to fix some surface cracking in a couple of garages that we've seen. Um, that revenue control upgrade, that's just the closeout of the project for the parking technology across the seven garages, just waiting to do the final acceptance when we start cutting those checks. David, there's the security monies that we've got. Yeah. Set aside. Yep. I just asked too soon. Yep. So that's there. We'd love to get that project underway to upgrade the system that we've got. It's a legacy. It's a really old system. We have servers basically in each of the seven garages. We'd love to move to a system where we have kind of one centralized server in our server room and then have kind of web enabled access to all of our facilities from anywhere. That's the goal. Upgrade some of our older camera technology as well. The uh, public art and public work support, these are just functional like percentages of overall project numbers that come from the budget office to set aside. Um, we have used in the past like this here, public work or the public art. If I know we've got a couple of murals on some of our facilities, the Third Street Garage is a good example where we have a large mural on the exterior um, that we've done some touch up on, engaged with the artist to do something. So those are some of the small expenditures that we see there. Um, and that money will either get liquidated or carried over to another year if there's a larger public art project. Uh, in this year, we've got 1.57 in the reserve. For the SAP and we'll continue to fund our reserve with unspent monies as we move forward because we know specifically in that Deer Don area we're going to need monies to address either parking problems, parking issues uh, relative to uh, the parking supply that the city's on the hook to provide to the arena or you know infrastructure that's needed in the area. Any Comments, questions. This is just an update, so no, no action necessary on that one. If there's not any discussion, then I can just roll it straight into the next one, which is the five year. So this one is a little less dynamic <laughs> in a way. So every year we have to do a five-year kind of project plan. As you can see, we've got, you know, $29 million lined up in some large buckets between the elevators, the facade, the parking inventory with land acquisition and parking development, uh, kind of that minor facility repair, and the revenue control, once we start spending those funds, you know, this represents kind of what we would say a typical year would be. So this is what we are budgeting currently. That basically this takes the first four years of our current five year. And then like we've done in previous iterations of this report to the board is that we've, we've left this blank and then 
we are basically then tell the board that at this point in time for our fifth year, we don't have any identified large scale project that would that would trigger a change to this and that we would plug and play these numbers into our fifth year. And then what it would happen is that our 23, 24 number will likely change based upon what we do or don't do in 22, 23, where monies then get carried over. For example, let's say the garage facade, cross our fingers, we're not in this situation, but it doesn't move along fast enough and this money isn't spent, the 4.5 million. Well, then we would move that over to here and we would then see 4.5 million in 22, 23, but we are not then activating more money in any out year for any additional facade project. And that would carry forward with elevators. We hold $500,000 in each of our out years. This can address any maintenance issue that might come up, whether it be vandalism or identified project at a facility, basically $500,000 will get us one or two elevator uh, modernizations or upgrades. Um, once we finish the project at the market, third and fourth in San Fernando garage, that really only leaves the um, second in San Carlos garage. It has a lone elevator. We've done some minor maintenance and improvements there, but there isn't a wholesale upgrade that can be done at that facility due to the style of elevator. And there was one not done not too long ago relative to the age, because these are kind of 10 to 15 year projects that we're undertaking now on those three facilities. So we won't see large scale elevator things uh, as an example, but revenue control, once we spend the five plus million dollars on our current system and kind of close that project out, we carry $250,000 a year to address, you know, minor maintenance or improvements to that system or meters where we might need to buy more meters. Um, so that's kind of the snapshot of our five year. I know it's not all that dynamic or exciting, but we, we <laughs> provide an opportunity for the board to, you know, provide any input or, you know, give us any suggestions. Have you thought about X, Y, or Z, you know, from a project perspective? And then where would that fall into this five-year look? Is it something we've already identified? Is it something we need to consider? So, Aaron, could you go... So this this is fine. It's all placeholders here, in my opinion. But yep. um, when I'm, I'm looking back on my other screen here for what's our net amount that we are uh, net revenue we're driving here in the 22, 23. 22, 23 from an operating from our revenue. Um, Revenues, less expenses, less see capital. Here. Right. Yep. So I'm trying to get to an ending balance one, and then I'm trying to get to two. What's our operating, you know, uh, net? Sure. And I think maybe is that operating can... net greater than the 2.8? Yeah. So maybe I'll just share this again, just to kind of go back to the 21, 22 as an example. Yep. I think this will be, you know, we're, we're hoping to see some increases across, you know, both the off street and on street lines. You know, I think we projected that slightly, what, 10% Heather, maybe 15. I forget what we landed on from an increase perspective. I don't have my last. Stack. So if you, if you scroll down here, Arian, uh, yep. so that's, that's the two, three. Correct. Right, our net operating. Yep. Um, and so that two, three isn't enough to support the two, eight that was on the previous slide. And yep. so do we have a the 22-23 budget, right? So it would be, a I think, the budget of where we're thinking this year is coming out. From So, yeah, so it's kind of twofold. We have the operating side, which we utilize to fund the capital side. But then the capital in and of itself has, has its own kind of profit loss, which is takes this into consideration. And then what is spent and unspent? which I think, you know, I mentioned in the last go when we were talking about 21, 22, where we were liquidating, you know, a million dollars from our miner because we didn't spend it. That went into the kind of fund balance for the capital side. 
So things like that then would pick up that that shortfall in many ways, depending on you know where some of these line items shake out. For example, uh, like security, we know we're going to hold this 1.2 million because we're 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 going to have a project. Things like minor, where we have 2.8 million this year, we've got about I'd say a million million and a half kind of identified in some projects, whether it's that um, repave of the lot, the remediation of some of those uh, cracking and ponding issues I talked about. Um, but I would expect we would have a million dollars to, you know, or so plus or minus that would go down to fund balance um, that would then offset the need for a new 1.75, let's say, in this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let me try it. it. It does. Let me let me try it a different way now. Sure. So I'm going to keep round numbers here. All right. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is about a two million dollar net operating income. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'm seeing a three million dollar. I'm rounding up and down here, but yep. that's purposeful. Uh, three million dollars of capital outflow yep. that's projected over time. Okay. We have this, you know, coming out of COVID thing that, you know, we don't know, you know, if revenues are going up or if this is flat or, and, and so to me, what's remiss in this five-year capital plan is it's not, we probably need to do a five-year revenue plan. And because I don't think we can be saying, let's spend $3 million a year because right now, because the only plan we have is this year, it tells us we only got two million a year, and and there is a beginning balance, and I agree you could spend that down, but most healthy businesses keep a reserve, right? Mm -hmm. And and so you're not when you use that reserve, you're kind of going out of business, or it, it might be strategic, but you you want to fund, you want that three million to be three three million net and three million of outflow. When you're doing out your projections, yep. Um, Heather, feel free to jump in. I mean, I don't disagree with the statement. I don't know if there's a question in there necessarily. Well, but um, maybe it's instead of two point eight, whatever, right? Then I'm rounding up to three. Maybe it needs to be two and a half, right? Because that's the the number that we're currently seeing. Or if your assumption is we're growing. And that two million or two two, whatever the actual number is, you expect to grow. Then, if it's just a footnote in there that we expect to see greater operating net income, I'd be okay with that because again, it's a plan, right? So, so I don't want to get too, you know, squirreled up in this thing. But I, as a planner, I like to make sure my assumptions balance. And right now, in my mind, these aren't balancing. Not materially off, but they're but they're off. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to think of what our next step from our perspective could be without reinventing a process and or stepping outside of the, the so system. as we move through the city's budgeting process. In particular, capital usually goes first, which is a little bit before, which is odd because you need to know your operating before you do, it's to the core of your question. You need to know your operating numbers before you can plan for your capital. But the city, we go through capital first and then we, we follow up with operating. As part of our exercise, when we present and we go through our capital budget, we do do, we do do a source and use that kind of, that has a five-year out, outlook to it because city budget will not allow us to not balance. We can't have any red in our five-year plan and present that um, for approval. So it does get kind of fine-tuned as we go. I think in this, this perspective here is we're asking the board to kind of look in general at if there's items that they would like to see on the capital. So we're kind of giving you a general, to your point, it doesn't match up exactly um, with specifics. It's in the ballpark. Um, 
there's some confidence, you should have some confidence in knowing that we can't go with an unba unbalanced budget or capital program. So um, it does get kind of worked out in the wash as we go through the various steps embedded along the way. Um, I don't know that the cadence of our meetings and the budget process really line up well for us to be able to kind of give you the detail that you're that you're asking for. I understand why you are. Um, it just is this kind of we struggle with when our meetings are and where we are in our city's process and what information we have available to kind of present. So let me make a suggestion that maybe bridges. Sure. The, all right, because you know. It, you have a couple of footnotes on the bottom of this capital plan, right? That's the 2.874, right? And so maybe you put a footnote that's down the bottom that assumes a 5% growth rate in parking revenues, net, net operating. Some, something that, because... You know what? You, maybe we could share... Something like that bridges the gap, I think. So maybe, I mean, I think the information might be available to... to that you're looking for, um, Charlie. So this is the city's, and I think we provided this in the last last meeting. I don't have it in front of me, but this is the the adopted five year capital program. I pulled up the parking side. So this is twenty three through twenty seven. Right. Um, here's the finance pieces. Of it. Here's the beginning balance of our capital fund five five nine. So this is an operating fund. It's <laughs> completely separate. The beginning balance here's all the project lines and then here's the ending fund balance so we're not negative we were we have some limited reserve in there here's all the projects so here's those five years those kind of standing five year the document that i shared previously uh yeah no, so i get all that but if you go back to that what you were and page down one right so the 347 that's left that's the going out of business story, right? We're spending through our reserves. So at the end of this five-year plan, we're broke. Well, well, yeah, but then. And, and I'm all, all I'm stating, because I don't want to change your numbers because you got a process that you're doing. But if you footnoted that this capital plan requires, you know, uh, or needs a 5% increase in parking revenues, you know, annually or so, so whatever the math works out to be, you guys come up with the number, then you're not putting forward a going out of business story. I think we can do that. I think we can put a, a caveat down there in the footnote. Um, and of course, well, I, I think, if, you know, if the, if the story reflects, you know, something that you, you don't put money into a reserve, if it's, quote unquote, going out of business, right? So those those numbers liquidate. And I think that dynamically changes that. I, so yeah, I know we this this document was copied and pasted. This was in the last uh, last meeting packet, I believe. Um, if it wasn't in the last one, then it was then the one prior to that. Okay, uh, I'll put it out. If my fellow board members don't have an issue with this, then you know I'll stand down. Uh, but <clears throat> to me, I, I think if you put that caveat in there, it clearly makes me comfortable uh, with your process. We'll, we'll make some notes and see what we can do to uh, better kind of articulate where the city's at and where this budget on the capital side. Um, and maybe it's more clearly showing that actual budget document that paints that that story of, I think it was what, 350,000 at the end of the five year and just continually you know showing that as that document's being published to say, here's where we're at and that's the story that's going through. Laura. Uh, Hi. Um, so maybe just to provide some additional context, and maybe Erin already did this, but this is similar to the budgeting in most capital programs within the city, where we have programmatic expenditures over the course of the five-year CIP. The most, the more 
the earlier years are more exact but if we find and not just in the parking fund but in our traffic capital as we get closer and and now let's say 25 26 is is the next year and we have a revenue imbalance we're looking to make adjustments you know we're, we're not going to spend money that we don't have and you know the parking fund would be similar if if we're getting to the later years and need to look at okay we can't do green technologies or we can't you know do the greater downtown multimodal we are making those um adjustments um if it's needed i don't know if that helps no that that's the realities of you know you're never gonna spend more than you have so i completely agree with that laura Right. So, so that, from an operational point of view, I, I don't worry about this, but it, it's, it's from a planning point of view that I think we're taking a step uh, when, you know, we're it's on shifting sands. That's all. And, and I, I'm just looking to support it, uh, you know, as you do the five year look. I know the reality won't be a problem. So, however, you guys can manage that i think you're not looking for approval here are you on this? no this is just an update item right so, so I, that's why i think it can be left hanging yep item 6a uh meter district area reserve all right i'll take this one and let Aaron just stop talking for a minute <laughs> um i have a very brief um, update on the um, micrometer reserve uh, structures and discussion. Um, so we continue to work through these potential uh, reserves and the potential structure that they may take for the board's consideration. Um, previously, we've come to the board and, and kind of described our historical revenue um, reserves, the structure and the mechanisms around that. And um, through conversations, if you guys remember, uh, the board directed us to focus on um, micro reserves where we um, fund individual reserves based on the areas, the meter district areas, and the revenue generated specifically in those, gen in those uh, districts. Um, so over the last few months, uh, staff has continued our conversations internally with um, heads of departments that um, kind of touch this. Um, most recently, we met with the city attorney's office and um, the city's budget office and the budget director. Uh, during those recent conversations, um, some challenges and kind of questions surfaced um, that definitely are going to require some, some more review and discussion with more city administration and um, other departments. One of the specific challenges um, that kind of was, was sunshined in our conversations recently um, related to the the use of funds, um, how those funds would be dispersed, physically, you know, the, what the, that process might be, <clears throat> and then what specifically are the funds going to be allowed to be used for? What could, what would, or could they be used for? Um, that those specific conversations kind of spurred a larger equity that maybe a larger equity discussion would be warranted um, with re with regards to the reserves. So, staff is planning on doing a deeper dive. Um, into the subject of equity as it relates to these uh, potential meter reserves or these micro reserves. Um, and then once we've had those kind of internal discussions and walked those up, our administration um, and senior staff and executive staff, then we will come back to the board. Um, we're hopeful that that will happen and we may have a recommendation for you to consider um, in March at our next meeting. Um, so that's kind of where we are and, and where um, where we've made some progress and where we still need to kind of focus some some efforts. And per um, Fortunate Elias' uh, meter, rev meter re uh, revenue report earlier, we're still in the red, as David pointed out, all across uh, that entire chart. So we still have some time before we're gonna be back in the black um, to be able to even um, kind of divvy up some, some reserve funds. So um, that's where we are. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer or if there's anything you'd like to make sure we continue to drill into as we move through our, our um, kind of discovery phases 
and recommendation forming, let us know. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Um, I saw in the downtown transportation plan that there are potential discussions around setting up another sort of infrastructure to, to deal with these meter district reserve funds or meter meter monies somehow. Um, do you anticipate that the, the meter district micro reserves are going to end up being administered by this other organization? Um, there's a lot of information. There's a lot in that, that plan. Um, some of it very kind of high in the sky, for lack of a better term, um, and just kind of ideas that are being had. Um, and a lot of that, we've had conversations just internally, I'll let you know, around, we kind of have a structure. We have this meter reserve and these conversations and where we are marching or you know kind of going down this track to to establish or reestablish or re um kind of re reframe right because we already have reserves on the books and then this other discussion is really more geared towards kind of deeridon activity um although there's conversations about if that takes place and there are um you know there is an entity that's kind of in charge of revenue meter additional net meter revenues and how those get dispersed was through you know paying for tdm or other kind of multimodal projects and things like that would it link to the already existing kind of downtown um and surrounding exterior res meter reserves and that money and we've tried to kind of make those very separate when we're having these conversations um could it go that way possibly um but that's a long conversation to have i don't think we're we're at we're definitely not at that point to have the conversation about combining anything yet so um it's it's always a possibility i think our idea here is that we would keep those separate all right thanks <laughs> anything anyone else all right Item 6B, I think, Heather, you were taking this curbside management and demand responsive pricing. I'll take that one, too. So um, another very brief update. Um, both this uh, this effort and the um, reserve effort are sprinkled throughout our work plan for the year. So we will continue these conversations um, meeting after meeting from here on out. Um, you may recall that uh, earlier in during the pandemic, midway through the pandemic, towards the end of um, staff presented an idea related to demand-based or dynamic-based pricing, which um, took kind of in its premise that occupancy levels at the various meters um, and would potentially drive increases or decreases in rates based on what the occupancy levels were. Um, we heard from the board that we wanted to pause that conversation um, so we could watch how the recovery happened and what um, transpired through that recovery. And we agreed to pause it for a year. Um, that pause expired in October. So we are now um, kind of resurfacing the conversation. Um, in preparation for that, staff has started to do um, a digger, a deeper dive into data. Um, to kind of better frame. When we pre presented it, um, it was very kind of hypothetical, not um, rooted in a significant amount of actual data. Um, and anything that we maybe used, we based it on kind of pre-COVID, which we know is not our norm and might not be for some time um, to come. So uh, staff has undertaken its first uh, data and occupancy look at the meters as they exist now and the activity as it is happening um, in our current environment. That took place in October. So last month, it just they just finished up the data collection and they're started, they're working through the analysis of the data that they collected. Um, we're hoping that we will continue those data looks at data collection and occupancy. Our next one we're looking at collecting in kind of end of January, early February. Um, we need to skip over the kind of holidays period towards the end of November through December and early January, because that's really not, um, that's a kind of a, a blip on the screen where it goes a little wonky and things happen that it doesn't happen, don't, don't happen during the remainder of the year. So we want to make sure we don't use that data um, 
because it could skew could skew our results, right? So we're going to wait until kind of end of uh, January, early February to do our next uh, occupancy look, and then we will obviously crunch those numbers and compare them to what we what we pulled for October, and then hopefully it'll start to kind of paint this picture of where we are activity wise, match it up to where we are revenue wise and what that's looking like, um, and then help us better understand. We proposed some very kind of general borders of where we would draw these kind of zones to kind of up and down, move up and down these rates. Um, we need to kind of look at those and drown truth them and see, um, is are these really good, good areas? Do we need to expand them? Do we need to contract them? Do we need to modify them? And hopefully that occupancy data will help us um, kind of frame that a little bit better and tighten those up. Um, and then obviously the, the, at that point, then the conversation was, is this the right time? Um, do we need to continue to monitor or should we we kind of engage in this serious conversation about this being a program that we would like to recommend and, and, and move forward with? So um, that's where we are. And um, we will be coming back at the at a subsequent meeting with some some more information after we're hoping that we can we can come back um, in March. But depending on how uh, how quickly we can get that data set in February analyzed and cranked out and into a report, we'll, we'll have to see what our staffing capability is at that time. So um, anybody have any questions on that? Yes, David. Just one quick one. Uh, well, actually two. One, what other place, maybe when you come in March, you could tell us other people that are doing this around the country and how it's uh, being implemented and how they're doing. I'd be curious to hear that. And then secondly, um, what ex I don't know if this is the time to answer this, but what is the data set? Is it like you're looking at each parking meter and you're seeing how much time it is occupied and not occupied over a 24 hour period? Is that the data set? The data set is a point in time um, in within we divided it into bands time bands. Okay. So I think they're three or four hour time bands. I can't remember exactly. And we go. Um, and survey the occupancy and see what on-street parking activity is occurring at that time. Um, and, and then we go back. Counts. Physical okay. counts. Physical so counts. counts. Yeah. Physically so without. people people are walking down the street between twelve and three, and they're counting the parking places that are full and those that are empty. Correct. That's the data set. That's that's one You're of the data sets. that for Elias can answer this for me. I'm sure for. 1,374 parking places or something like that. I don't know what the number is. I forgot. Did I get it right? <laughs> it was, yeah, something like that. Elias and I participated yeah, in the so, occupancy counts the last go around. You guys are physically walking down the street counting spaces. Correct. And if it's 12 to 3 and you walk by at 1 and it's full, but then somebody pulls out at 1.30, what does yeah. that mean? Again, like Heather said, it's a snapshot in that moment. So we're attempting to say, you know, in generally the let's use 11 to 2 p.m. ban. If we went by at 12:30 or whatever the time was, it was occupied. We do not have a time from 11, 11:05, 11:10 for every meter. I have no more questions. I'll be interested to see the results. Thank you. And just so you know, David, we we are. We have ALPR um, for in our, our uh, parking compliance unit. And long term, we would like to be able to use the vehicle mounted car, the vehicle mounted cameras to be able to kind of take that inventory for us. Um, right. and, and we definitely will get there. So we won't have to do this manual <laughs> trouncing around with all of our interns and everybody that we can find, um, put them out on the street with a clipboard. But there's you a get lot 10, of 10,000 steps in anyway. So. <laughs> well, let's be um, honest. I'm lazy. I drove. Darian <laughs> drove it. Just yelled it. Oh you know, yelled out. So, to the okay. occupied what is occupied what is a? Last, I'm sorry. I have to ask this question. It's a FLA. What does ALPR stand for? Automated license plate recognition. Okay, thank you. The license plate stuff. License right. plate. So it will count cars basically as we go through. It will recognize cars. The um, Front end More. setup. You told however, me everything I need to know. <laughs> is, is a little cumbersome, so we haven't gotten there yet, but we're we're progressing. All right. Anyone else? All right. 
Arian, I gave you a five minute break. Hit it. Well, actually, I think the next item, six C, is it's falling mine. back to Elias. Okay, can you read the title for me on 6C, Arian? Sure. Strengthening Mobility and Revolutionizing Transportation, the SMART Smart Grant. And it's a recommendation for approval of formal DPB support for the Smart Grant opportunity with the U.S. Yes. Department of Transportation. Yes, so there is an opportunity through the U.S. DOT to apply for this grant. Um, the, uh, the grant is divided into two stages, stage one, which be prototyping and um, a model for uh, what we need to do. And stage two would be full implementation uh, and scaling the, uh, if we decide after that, that it, this is what we need to do, we scale it um, across the board. Um, so the application requires uh, letters of support from local uh, organizations, organizations um, to support the grant. We are also seeking a letter of support from congressmen, senate, senators. Uh, the grant in stage one is uh, up to $2 million of funding if we get approved to it, up to $2 million. However, the implementation needs to be done within 18 months. Um, we are the grant that we are applying for. Uh, we are gonna focus our efforts on curb inventory of uh, the regulations, curb inventory, curb regulations, collection of data and standardization. And uh, also it will be uh, including a hardware component, which is curb utilization, which will help us get the curb utilization like uh, David was talking about, that we may be more robust uh, curb utilization uh, by using uh, hardware, cameras, sensors, and the software platform. Uh, that will enable us to not only know at one point of time what the uh, occupancy is, but also to give us information such as the length of stay, uh, where exactly the um, you know the uh, the event happened, we will be able to cover uh, locations other than meters, such as uh, freight loading zones, passenger loading zones, or any curb parking that we are interested to know about. Uh, so we are asking uh, the uh, board to. Um, to help us with the letter of support, we will be drafting the language that we're working with consultants on to for that makes it, you know, um, um, worthwhile your effort. And uh, we want your, I think what we're asking here is your support for the letter of support that we will be drafting to get the grant. David, you're on mute. I am. I move we support this. You've only got till November 18th, though, it looks like. Yes, we're in uh, full force and we will need the deadline. So I think if, if nine days to submit, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So if this if this follows how we've done it in the past relative to kind of letters of support from the board, is that staff will do the the difficult legwork to actually draft the letter for you and then allow the chair and vice chair to sign off on it on behalf of the board. So we've got a motion from David, if I can get a second and then a hand raise. Second. Go get the money, man. <laughs> and uh, there's no uh, dissent. I'll mark it down as four approved. Approved. Okay. All right. Just a couple of last items and we'll get you out of here hopefully half hour early. Um, wanted to share with the board, we have worked with the Downtown Association, which manages our, our website, to update the website, which now includes occupancy data in real time for our core garages downtown. So where the website previously focused a lot on kind of programmatic pieces, you know, 
uh, there was a map and stuff like that. Now, right front and center, you can see the seven garages downtown with the new parking technology that's feeding this data. So that in real time, you can see a snapshot of, of the garages and what the occupancy levels are. And so it's there in a quick, easy to read uh, kind of legend next to the map where you can see each of the garages. You can get driving directions. It's really seamless on a mobile device. It's a little more cumbersome on, on a computer, but uh, you've got that. So you can see that I just updated it here a minute ago. So these data were updated 1117, 1116, 1118. Um, convention center, the Zoomtopia event that I mentioned earlier is happening. So that garage is very, very full, 93%. Market Street, only 35, so on and so forth. Fourth and St. John is the employee garage, 83%. City Hall, 53. You can click on the Learn Now for any specific facility, get kind of all of the details, the rates. You can also get driving directions. It's kind of reiterated again on what the availability is. Um, and then the, the new feature that we'll be rolling out here shortly in a kind of test path platform is a reservation where we're going to actually allow reserving spaces. So we'll open up a handful of spaces um, at the Market Street garage to start. It's the most heavily utilized. It's the most in demand for kind of lunch activity, dinner, and then obviously for Sharks games and SAP Center events. So we don't have that live now. Currently, it just takes you to a coming soon uh, landing page. But once we get to that, you'll be able to input the, the start time, end time, reserve and pay for parking. We'll also have some kind of shortcuts for key SAP center events. So all of our Sharks games and any of the larger uh, concerts or events happening at the arena where we want to just make it a kind of one click situation. So if you wanted to go to a Sharks game at you know, Thursday, November 19th, you would just click that date and it would take you to the thing. It would charge you the same $10 uh, that you would pay if you arrived in person, but then you would have your space uh, or you would have availability guaranteed. We would hold space back if we were ever to get to a point where the garage is full. So streamlining some of that, we'll then roll it out to the convention center, working with Team San Jose on some of their key events. And then eventually, hopefully get to a place where we can do it for all of the garages. We just need to be in a position where we can manage that inventory. Uh, luckily, if we do roll that out soon, we're not against occupancy pressures, but looking forward to kind of a future where we're back to fully normal, um, we'll have to have a lot of staff engagement to ensure that the number of spaces that are being held in reservation are being kind of held back from the general public in any garage. So we're excited that this data is now actively being used with the new system and can be disseminated uh, out to the general public. So parksj.org is the landing page. Uh, tell your, your various stakeholders that uh, they can find that information. Charlie, if you wanna share that with whomever at the university that might wanna put it on there relative to the fourth and San Fernando garage, um, people can easily find parking. So this is already implemented. Yeah, this page is live that I was sharing. So if you go okay. to parksj.org, uh, you'll see that uh, that information there. Pull it up on your cell phone. It's on the on a cell phone or a mobile device. It's just a singular long column of each of these boxes here. Um, just kind of real streamlined to see it just real quickly. We wanted to try to make it as quick and snapshot as, as possible and make that uh, driving direction component if they were to click on one of these uh, locations. I think it pulls up the, the Google driving app or maybe whatever your favorite navigation app is. So when you reserve a parking spot there with a system, does it give you a specific parking space or no. just guarantees you a, a spot? Yeah, a spot, not a specific space. So okay. it'll, it'll generate a QR code uh, that you'll then drive up to the entry, scan the QR code at the entry gate instead of pulling a ticket. 
the gate will raise. When you exit, scan the QR code, you're free to exit. If somebody stays beyond their reservation time, then they're responsible for the payment uh, <coughs> when your time stayed over. Okay. So, yeah, very exciting kind of component that we knew we'd be bringing forward all along with the system. Uh, we just finally kind of cross that milestone and thanks to the uh, downtown association and their web development team for kind of revamping the website with this uh, information. Last item 7B, um, city council committee agenda items. I don't, <coughs> I'm not aware of any council items on our plate, Heather. I don't, I don't have anything going to council for myself on the off street side or committee. Elias, I don't think we have anything. So with that, I think it's just calling out that the next board meeting, March 1st, where we'll, uh, we'll all meet again, rinse and repeat. Just, just a quick question. I mean, will we ever meet in person again? I think the the way the city and it, the clerk's office and the boards and committees have been set now to allow for ongoing hybrid meetings in this format of uh, allowing the, the boards and commissions to continue in a remote capacity so long as it's conducive to that individual board and committee. Um, and I don't know about the board in and of itself, but absent your need to have to travel to city hall, you know, during that specific window. Um, it's worked for us for the last two and a half years. So from a staff perspective, we're not pushing for it. So that means I'll never get to come hug you. You know, David, you just let me know and we can grab lunch. All right. With or without the hug. <laughs> we'll have to do that. <laughs> All right, anyway, everyone. Aaron, All right. Aaron, I, I think the issue is in order to allow a Zoom platform for the public, the, the city only has its council chambers equipped for that. And so um, I think that's that's the primary that's reason. Driving. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I just uh, continue to follow the, the clerk's rules and recommendations. And at this point, here we are. So I will send out the information as we get closer to that March meeting. Um, this is our longest kind of break between meetings based on the cadence. So um, happy holidays to everyone and we'll connect in the new year.